We've talked about variables and that variables can either be categorical data or quantitative data. In this video we're going to talk about ways that we can visually display the categorical data that we collect. The first thing we can do is we can make a data table. And this right here is what we call a data table. So we're looking at a class, say maybe a statistics class, on the first day. Okay, now this would be a four-year school because we have freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. But we have the count, how many freshmen, how many sophomores, how many juniors, and how many seniors. And then we have the percents. So here to get this percent, what they've done is they've done 18 divided by the total of 43. See the total down here. Now why is it that this adds up to 101%. How do we have a higher percentage of people in the class than we have in the class? Well, that's from rounding. You see that each of these percents is rounded to one decimal place. And when we do that, sometimes it throws it off by a tenth or maybe a couple tenths of a percent. Here's another way that we can look at that same exact data. We can look at it in a pie chart. And now we've taken a circle and we've taken a portion of that circle for each of the classes, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Shaded each one a different color. And they are proportional. That means that 41.9% of this circle is right here for the freshman class. 14% of the circle is right here representing the junior class. Now the pie chart, it's really important to remember that you have to have 100% of your data in the pie chart. You can't have like... Uh, what looks like a pie with a piece eaten out of it. You have to have a hundred percent there. And here is yet another way to look at this categorical data. We can look at it in what we call a bar graph. And now what we've done is we've taken and we've put what the variable is on the horizontal axis and we have put each of the values that that variable can take on here and then going up the vertical axis we have the percents and then we have a bar for the freshman that goes up to the 41.9 percent mark we have a bar for the sophomores that goes up to the 23.3 percent mark now with the bar graph, you do not have to represent 100% of your data. We could have done a bar graph for just the freshmen and sophomores and saying that we want to look at the class make makeup from the lower um, classmen, okay? As opposed to the pie chart, which does need to have 100% of the data in it. Here's another example of a data table, and this one is U.S. solid waste in the year 2000. And you see that we have the weight, and then we have the percent of total. And notice that this one does add up to 100% down here. And so we can put that into a pie chart. Notice that this pie chart does not have the percentages associated with each one of them, but it's still proportional. The highest percentage was paper. The biggest wedge is paper. The smallest percentage was other. The smallest wedge was other. Notice this catch-all of other. When you have specific categories, and then you have kind of 
everything else, everything that doesn't fall into the specific categories that you have designated. You can put all that together into a category that you call other to allow you to still have 100% of the data and use a pie chart. And here is the analogous bar graph for, um, for solid weight percent recycled. So this does not go back to the same data table we use, but this is showing how we could use a bar graph that looks a little bit different in the same way.